This video gives two proofs of the mean value theorem for integrals. The mean value theorem for integrals says that for a continuous function f of x, defined on an interval from a to b, there's some number c between a and b such that f of c is equal to the average value of f. The first proof that I'm going to give uses the intermediate value theorem. Recall that the intermediate value theorem says that if we have a continuous function f defined on an interval, which I'll call x1, x2, if we have some number l in between f of x1 and f of x2, then f has to achieve the value l somewhere between x1 and x2. Keeping in mind the intermediate value theorem, let's turn our attention back to the mean value theorem for integrals. Now it's possible that our function f of x might be constant on the interval from a to b. But if that's true, then our mean value theorem for integrals holds easily, because f of is just equal to that constant, which is equal to f of c for any c between a and b. So let's assume that f is not constant. Well, a continuous function on a closed interval has to have a minimum value and a maximum value, which I'll call little m and big M. Now we know that f's average value on the interval has to be between its maximum value and its minimum value. If you don't believe this, consider the fact that all of f's values on the interval have to lie between big M and little m. And if we integrate this inequality, we get little m times b minus a is less than or equal to the integral of f is less than or equal to big M times b minus a. Notice that the first and the last integrals were just integrating a constant. Now if I divide all three sides by b minus a, I can see that little m is less than or equal to the average value of f is less than or equal to big M, as I wanted. Now I just need to apply the intermediate value theorem. With f's average as my number l, and little m and big M as my values of f of x1 and f of x2. The intermediate value theorem says that f average is achieved by f of c for some c in between my x1 and x2, and therefore for some c in my interval a, b. And that proves the mean value theorem for integrals. Now I'm going to give a second proof for the mean value theorem for integrals, and this time it's going to be as a corollary to the regular mean value theorem for functions. Recall that the mean value theorem for functions says that if g of x is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the interior of that interval, then there is some number c in the interval such that the derivative of g at c is equal to the average rate of change of g across the whole interval from a to b. Let's keep the mean value theorem for functions in mind and turn our attention back to the mean value theorem for integrals. I'm going to define a function g of x to be the integral from a to x of f of t dt, where f is the function given to us in the statement of the mean value theorem for integrals. Notice that g of a is just the integral from a to a, which is 0, while g of b is the integral from a to b of our function. Now by the fundamental theorem of calculus, our function g of x is continuous and differentiable on the interval a, b, and g prime of x is equal to f of x. And by the mean value theorem for functions, we know that g prime of c has to equal g of b minus g of a over b minus a 
for some number c in the interval a, b. If we substitute in the three facts above into our equation below, we get f of c is equal to the integral from a to b of f of t dt minus 0 over b minus a, which is exactly the conclusion that we wanted to reach. This shows that the mean value theorem for integrals really is the mean value theorem for functions, where our function is an integral. And this completes the second proof of the mean value theorem for integrals. So now I've proved the mean value theorem for integrals in two different ways, and I've used a lot of the great theorems of calculus along the way.